Hi there. My name's Trent. I'm running a direct simple shear test. I've compacted a clay specimen, and right now, I'm squaring off the ends so that it'll stand up at 90 degrees. That's pretty much good. So now, we've squared the ends off. We're going to use this little cutting ring and this little top jig to get a real nice specimen, the right diameter and the right height. It's kind of a tricky part. Get this thing on here. There it goes. So, I word, what was that? Probably the lab cat. <laughs> so, I've got my ring up in the jig. Soil is centered. And we're just going to lower this right down on top of the soil. Make sure we got it perfect. Boom. Now we give it a little seating push. From here, I'm just going to take the knife and go right up around the edge and taper this off a little bit where I want to push the ring further. That'll help it, well, that'll reduce some of the disturbance. I just want to be very careful not to cut into the diameter of my sample. This will take a minute, so we'll be back in a few. All right, so we have pushed the ring down through the soil. All right, we have uh, got the ring pushed down through the soil at this point. Now, we take this top jig off, and you can see what we're dealing with here. Next step, essentially, we just want to fill the ring with soil. So we need to cut some of this excess off the base. The best way to do that is going to be to get that off of here, use our wire saw, and just not right below the ring, but pretty close to it. Cut some of this excess off. <clears throat> and it crumbled a little bit, but we got lucky. We still have everything that we need. From here, I'm going to basically do the same thing again. Cut a little bit closer and closer and then use a rigid saw to get this level with the ring on both sides. And I'll come back to you right when we're done with that. So now we've got a pretty decent sample to work with. It's right at the dimensions of our ring. We're going to use this disc to go ahead and push it out of the ring because in direct simple shear we're going to use a more fancy kind of ring that we'll see later. I'm going to attach these components to the jigs and come back to you and show you how we extrude this out of the ring. Okay, so we have we pushed the uh, ring down through the soil. See, we're level with the bottom and the top, perfectly square to the dimensions we need. Now we want to extrude this soil out of the ring. This is our extrusion disc. Place it on the base. This next part's a little bit tricky, but we put this, the ring into the top jig. Carefully get this onto the frame. And now we do everything we can to line the extrusion disc up with the ring. Just set it down on top of it and move everything into place and pray and then push and then try again. Be right back after the extrusion. All right, so we have extruded the soil. Set that right there for now. Now we're going to put these components on the top and the bottom. Alright, so we've got the soil out of the ring. We need to get a weight. Ready, five, one, two, three. 
the steps. All right. All right, now we have everything, our bottom cap and our top cap attached to our plates. And we're gonna get this thing going. We have some porous stones over here that have been soaking overnight. Notice, if you get in real close, this has a grooved surface that'll help it grip that specimen during the test. So we do not put a filter paper on there. So what I'm gonna do is put that right there in the bottom cap. Place our sample on top of that very carefully. That little part that fell off didn't really matter anyway. And we'll see why this is important later, but we're going to put the extrusion disc right on top. It basically gives us a little bit more height because now we need to put our membrane on there. The way we're doing this test, a lot of direct simple shear will have reinforcements in the membrane, but not us. We're going to put the membrane on the soil and then surround it with these confining rings that can move independently to achieve a state of true simple shear, hopefully. All right, as you can see over here, we got a member on the expander. We're going to gently put it over our sample and the brass uh, this place earlier to release the, va the, the vacuum built in. And as you can see, it would, it would connect to the sample or enforce the sample. What we're going to do now is remove the membrane from the expander gently uh, without applying any kind of pressure or stress on it to avoid any sample disturbance. Uh, once that is done, we'll, we'll put on. Go ahead. All right, so we'll put the O-rings on the expander and use the expander again to place, place the O-ring such that we're not connecting the sample, but at the same time doing a the good job of putting the O-ring on the, the bottom plate. As you can see over here, we have gently placed the O-ring and try to make it even level. Now what we're going to do, as you can see over here, we got 14 rings and two clamp holders at the ends. The clamp holder is going to go right on top of the O-ring, the black O-ring. So we pretty gently are going to put this down without disturbing the sample and on top of the O-ring, making sure it's flush with the O-ring. As you can see, a little finesse is involved in this, so when you do that, it takes a little bit of experience and uh, skills, but we got it pretty much flush with the O-ring. Now we're going to individually place the 14 rings I just showed you a second ago, and once that is done, we'll be right back. So, we've got our 14 rings on there now, got our disc out. Now we want to pull this membrane down over the rings, just for the time being. The top cap has been attached to the top jig here. We've got a porous stone up in there. We use our mold here to kind of guide us so we can get that right on top. The spatula will help keep the porous stone in. And we're in. Now, we're going to disconnect that top cap from the top jig. Got a little screw here in the back. And now we're just another step closer to having a test to run. Now we can pull this membrane back over the entire top cap and take our finishing piece here, very top clamping ring, and lay it right down on top of the others. At this point, just kind of like direct shear, and come in here and lock this thing up. So I'm going to put these screws in, put an O-ring around the top of this, and we'll come back and load this into it. So now we have our top cap on. We put an O-ring around there to secure the membrane. We're ready to load it in our frame. You might want to get a shot of what it's like up there basically the opposite of our mold. So we slide it right into place and now we'll use the geotag software to raise this up and get contact there. 
we take the same screws we used on the jigs and connect the top and bottom cap to the frame. After that, we're going to come over here. I'll just show you. We tell the computer what we want it to do by going to file and test data. We've already told it our test information. And you just come in here, loading schedule. We've taken what we want. Leading schedule for consolidation. Same for shear. We just go in and say what rate and what, how often to take readings, what load to put on it. And we save that. And essentially, once we get this set up, we will just hit start. It'll do its thing. And we'll come and do what we need to do when we need to do it. OK, so we have prepared the specimen. Got it all ringed up and ready to go. And now we have to tell you a little bit about the drainage system. All right, so our drainage line comes from our pipe in through the bottom of the specimen over here, or the bottom cap. Over here, we have the bottom cap connected to the top cap by that drainage line. On the other side, the top cap has a port with a line that goes out to our drainage bowl. And there's also a valve on that so we can shut it off later. For consolidation, or for saturation, we're going to open this. Let it flow through just under gravity pretty much. Once it goes in through the bottom and comes out the top, we're feeling good about it. We got it saturated. And we're going to leave this. We're still trying to saturate it. But we're going to note the point of saturation on the burette, consolidate, leave the valve open, and then we'll come back after consolidation, close it, and close the valve from the drainage port and then we'll shear. And now we've done everything we need to do to get started. Earlier we put in how we want to do our consolidation, how we want to do our shear. And you can see up here we're on the consolidation tab. Shear is not active right now. But we want to start consolidation. We don't need to remove the rings, the uh, clamping rings for this. We hit OK. It's seating. our test and now we just let it consolidate through its stage we'll come back and here in a few minutes well probably a little bit more than a few minutes to consolidate but we'll show you how the shear stuff all right consolidation is now done the computer's waiting on us to shear and it does that because we have to come back and take the shear pins out close off the drainage so that we are undrained now so here we are. See, in a direct shear, we would just have <laughs> basically the soil right here, pushing on the top, holding the bottom. But here, each ring is able to move independently. So we're going to start shearing. It reminds us to remove the clamps. We've done that. OK. And we'll show you what this looks like after it All right, so our specimen has now Sheared. You can take a close-up look. It's not really as impressive as you would hope, but you can be assured it felt it. And that's pretty much it. We're going to dismantle this thing, get a final moisture content. The software is going to do a lot of the work for us, so data reduction won't be that difficult. So again, we came in, we compacted a clay, and we ran a consolidated, undrained, direct, simple shear test on it. And you were there for every step of the way. It's been wonderful. Thank you.